Hey guys, uh, welcome to our salvation series. Uh, this is the intro video. Um, and so in the following couple of videos, um, I'll be explaining and outlining um, my proposed process for how we as a student ministry handle student salvations and professions of faith. Um, so that's a process that I've been working through and have made kind of some some steps for how I think we overall should handle things as a student ministry. And uh, I'm going to ask all of you to watch these videos and uh, give feedback and enter into a dialogue so that we can refine things and, and be all on the same page about that. Uh, this intro video should be shorter. I'll try to be quick, uh, but this is just explaining why I think this is worthwhile and important enough that uh, we're going to make a process for it and important enough for you guys to take your time and watch these videos. So uh, I've got five reasons that I'll just go through really quickly as to why I think this is important enough or worthwhile for us to do. Uh, the first one is just that I personally, and I think all of us as a team, we, we expect to see professions of faith and salvations in our student ministry. Uh, we're, uh, the, the idea of making this kind of a process is that we expect that this is going to be something that we're dealing with on a semi-regular basis, that we're going to have new students come in who profess faith in Christ. We're going to have a lot of students that even grew up in the church and have not yet put their trust in Christ as their Savior. And uh, this is a time period in, in people's lives where they make that decision um, often. And so we want to be able to handle that properly. So we're, we're making this process in a, an attitude of hopefulness and expectation that this is something that we're going to use um, uh, semi-regularly. Um, second, uh, I think an objection could be made to kind of this entire idea and this series of making a, a, a process and some steps for how to handle salvations. Someone could push back and say, um, that's not possible. You can't do that because every individual that comes to Christ is going to have a different uh, background, a different story. Uh, things are just going to be so different but from student to student that you can't really outline a process uh, for uh, handling this in a general sense. You just have to do it by a, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and I think that that's there's some truth in that. Every student that professes faith in Christ in our ministry is going to have a different story as to um, what moved them to do that. What is their history like? Um, all, all kinds of different things. What's their family life like? Um, and so that's going to create unique challenges. But uh, I think if we prepare really well for how we want things to go and flow uh, in general, that will put us in a lot better position to handle a variety of different situations and different questions that arise with each student. If we all are on the same page about how we would like things to flow ideally, then uh, I think that puts us in a, a much better position to handle the unique situations that every student uh, might present. Uh, third, uh, I want all of our leaders to feel confident doing this, confident leading a student to Christ, uh, following up with that student, um, and not having to freak out when this, this moment comes. I think that's the reaction of uh, most um, student volunteers and workers. That's been uh, certainly my reaction in the past a lot of times as a student comes to you and says that they want to put their faith in Christ and you immediately recognize that that is the biggest decision that they could make in their entire life. And now you're the one that has to respond to that and uh, guide them through that process well. And that often produces a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety in us, a, a lack of confidence where uh, youth workers are often leaning hard on the, the youth pastor, the student pastor to swoop in and take care of things because they don't feel equipped to do that. And I want you guys to feel uh, equipped and confident enough to do this uh, because I think you are. Um, certainly capable of doing it. There's no reason why a pastor has to be intimately involved in all of these steps. Um, and that's valuable for our students who are going to latch on to different leaders. A lot of students are going to be more comfortable with some of you than they are with me. Uh, they'll feel more relaxed having uh, big theological, uh, spiritual discussions with you rather than with me. Um, and we want every leader to be equipped to do that. And so if a student feels comfortable enough to come up to you personally and share this with them uh, or with you, we want you to feel confident and relaxed that you're prepared and equipped to handle that. You know how to react. You know that what you're doing is kind of in accord with what we've decided as a, as a volunteer team. And so 
Uh, that's another reason why I think this is a, a great idea and really important for us to do. Um, the last one is, I think, in general, uh, the church and particularly student ministries um, handle salvations poorly, often. We often handle salvations, professions of faith, really poorly. And I think uh, there's a variety of reasons behind that, but I think one of them is just that there's no, there's no outline. There's no process that, that we need to, or that we've agreed that we want to follow. And so every person has a different idea about how they think these should flow. And then every person that professes faith brings dis- different circumstances. And when you mesh those two together, you get a lot of delays, a lot of confusion, a lot of one person says this and somebody else says this. Um, and that can create a lot of doubt, a lot of uncertainty in new believers. Um, and this is uh, a process that we want to trust God in. So we don't want to be fearful and anxious, and we don't want to feel like the weight of the world, the weight of this person's salvation is in our hands. We trust that God is sovereign, and that if he begins a good work in a student, he'll bring it to completion, even if we do a terrible job uh, following up and discipling and immediately reacting to that student. But just because we trust God's sovereignty doesn't mean that we don't prepare well um, to do this as good as we possibly can. Uh, those two are not uh, mutually exclusive. They can go together. We can trust that God is going to do uh, his part and that he ultimately holds sway over these life-changing decisions. But we can also come alongside that and prepare and work well uh, to, to do put forth our best effort. So that's why we're doing this series. That's why I think it's really, really important. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, a dialogue and discussion with you guys uh, moving forward.